How we doing, LA? Los Angeles! Look at these beautiful people. Woo! Unbelievable. Gonna have a heart attack tonight! <laughs> was, was, that a, was that a dove? It was a bird. We don't usually get <laughs> to do silhouettes. This is a beautiful venue. Thank you so much for coming out. Yes, Los Angeles. Unbelievable. We finally found a city where Jason can pander to multiple fan bases. Yeah. Yeah, we, I we would, heard I, you. I would never. <laughs> we got Brooks in the back. Can we shout out Brooks? What's up, Brooksy? Oh, we got the lights up for Brooks. Oh. Brooks, 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 Brooks. Oh, my goodness. Are you excited? I think they're excited. They're excited. And, and please. Oh, yes. If, if you're nasty. Like, Joe, like I, I need to hear it's football time. I need to hear the mailbag drop. I need it to be as loud as freaking possible. And for the first time ever, I'm leaning on Los Angeles for the welcome in. Can you guys yes. handle that? We're jumping on your backs tonight. <laughs> Gonna you, be can't, one of those, you can't gonna jump be one on, of those nights. If is you it? jump on Kyler's back, we're all tipping over. We know that. We know he's not supporting us. But our legs can still be on the ground. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> How did this turn on Kyler I don't so know. quickly? Someone said, Kyler. Look, we're we're ready. We're ready to turn on people. Whoever needs to be turned on. We're gonna have a great time tonight. You ready for a show? Yeah. All right. I need you on the welcome in, Brooks. When you're ready, hit it. the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in! Wow, it's hot tonight. And I mean, it's not hot because the, the weather is incredible here. It's always incredible in Los Angeles. The Fantasy Footballers Live. We have a great show tonight live in Los Angeles. Jason, I don't know which of the two fan bases you're picking to pander to tonight, but I bet it should be the Rams. I'll bet it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, tonight, today, I mean, look, I know, I know, I know. Hey, sh here's the thing. I've pandered a lot. We've already shushed you, them. You pandered to the Detroit Lions fan base. That was just coming from the heart, Mike. It was shameful. <laughs> Tonight, I might just be here to fight. We'll find out. Oh. It's got a new attitude. <laughs> we got ice and fire picks on the show today. Oh, my goodness. We got a live mailbag on the show today. We do. And we've got a uh, well, we've got a good time here at the Quick Question. Of course, it's a live show. You know that the Quick Question is going to be great. It's very simple. The quick Question is this: Compare a fantasy player to a blockbuster movie. Hmm. It's a broad canvas that we can paint upon. Who's going first? I, I'm going to go first. Oh yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I asked. We're going to talk about Tyreek Hill. Okay. Okay. Ooh, now, that was mixed. That was I mean, mixed. I thought I thought long and hard about this. You okay. know, lots of movies to choose from, but one stuck out. And um, well, Tyreek Hill is. Go ahead and put it up there. Mm. He's speed two. <laughs> <laughs> the classic. I, okay, so we we do have a custom image of uh, Tyreek Hill. At, on the Speed 2 cover, what I did not notice, this I'm seeing this for the first time. Okay. We have a quote from Siskel and Ebert. It's definitely not the first movie. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. That was a paraphrase. That's brutal. Um, look, uh, you can see the picture here, and if you're listening, you're familiar with Speed. Great oh, movie. 94% on Rotten Tomato. Keanu Reeves' breakout movie. Keanu Reeves was outstanding. Sandra Bullock, outstanding. Breakout movie. When you have a movie that good, you need you want the sequel. You want the sequel to show up. 
Mm, speed two cruise control landed four percent. Four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. But if you add them together, now you see, you can look at the situation. And you say, well, you had Patrick Mahomes, you had Tyree Kill. Which one was Sandra Bullock? Which one was Keanu? Okay. And that's where you get into the problem because Keanu did not return for Speed Two. It was somebody named Jason Patrick. Jason Patrick? Yes. Uh, Time Magazine called him fundamentally uninteresting. <laughs> <laughs> fundamentally? Fundamentally, at his core. So, the. <laughs> that is, that's a shot to the heart. He was nominated for a uh, Raspberry Award. Okay. <laughs> And it was the worst screen couple as oh, well. Oh. So, I'm not saying that Cruise controls what you're getting with Tua and that Tua is Jason Patrick. I'm saying that's the risk. Sure. That's as far it can go. You've already got the best cast possible for Tyreek Hill with Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill. So when you look to his second act, you're leaning on Jason Patrick in the backfield. <laughs> And it could go wrong. It doesn't mean it will. It could go wrong. And the thing is, is beyond the incredible logic of that comparison, the stats back this up. Wide receivers changing teams score 21% fewer points the next season. That's going to hurt your Tyreek Hill shares. Let's hope it's not speed, too. He is fast, so I get the speed comparison. Yes. yes. Also, I would say that... Is that all you got out of the entire... <laughs> yeah, you went, this was, was about him being fast, right? He's fast. Speed. And now he's speed too. No, totally hear you okay. loud and clear. It's in uh, your wheelhouse I, too. It's a boat. Yeah, it's so like I'm, a good cruise. I'm uh, I'm gonna go kind of somewhat similarly, right? Like a a, a player who's who's fast, been great, not as fast. Let's talk about Juju Smith Schuster. Now we've already we've already named him after a movie, A Star Is Born. But unfortunately, or did they name the movie after him? Right. I mean, uh, you could argue as you know, it was a supernova and. Just blew up and just dead. Um, and no longer there. But if you guys remember Juju Smith-Schuster, you know, he was the consensus dynasty startup 101. Yep. Just I barely remember. Ago. That was a great year. You know, and, and now he's sucked. And he's really been a bum that can't get much of an NFL contract. He's on a one-year $3.2 million guaranteed with incentives on the chief. So what is he? I was thinking, like, is he... A once great movie franchise that is now, you know, a joke, or oh, like Indiana is Jones he... Four. Oh no, 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 no. We don't no, speak no, no, that. No, no, that movie no, never no, no, existed. No, no. I would with never the bring aliens. That I don't know. What I don't. You're talking yeah, about. I have no idea. There was no such thing. But uh, no, I think that the movie that represents Juju Smith Schuster is Top Gun Maverick, oh, yeah. baby. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, baby. Look at those shades on Mahomes. Look, Top Gun... Those are TikTok shades. ...was a great movie <laughs> yeah. a long time ago, and it went away. It disappeared. Tom Cruise went insane for a <laughs> while <laughs> and was gone. Well, Juju disappeared, but how is it going to come back? Top Gun Maverick, I don't, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's perfection. I mean, it's a really good movie. I hear there's a lot of mustaches. There are at least one. <laughs> um, so, look, here's the thing with Juju. Juju is 25 years old. Two years ago, when he was still playing with a sucky Big Ben and sucked, he was the wide receiver 18. Do you realize that? Yeah. That two years ago, he was wide receiver 18. Then last year, he was injured. And I want to read something here from someone that you guys all know and love. A brilliant mind in our industry named Andrew Holloway. Wait, you're quoting Andy I'm, to Andy? I'm quoting Andy. Well, I I'm almost made the, the joke people. that you'd be quoting me, and he actually is. I actually am. This is new to you. So this was from the Things to Remember episode. He called this, proof was in the pudding. Quote, there are players in fantasy we hope make the leap, and then there are players in fantasy who have made the leap and regressed for whatever reason. This is Andy saying, I want to remember to buy into some of the players who regressed because they are they have been proven via on-the-field evidence that they can produce at league-winning levels. That's what Cooper Cup was, Debo Samuel, Leonard Fournette, James Conner. They had shown greatness and regressed for whatever reason. Sounds intelligent. And, yeah, it, it's, it's brilliant, which is why, Andy, you, this offseason, might have traded for Juju Smith-Schuster. Congratulations. 
Do you still have him? In your no, dice? I traded him to oh, you. Oh, you traded him to me. That's right, you fool. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> And I've got him now, and he will bounce back. He will be the number one uh, re- wide receiver target for the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes. That's bold. And I think where he's going in drafts right now is a steal. You know and what I also, like? He, he's, he looks great in aviators. I mean, honestly, we all do. Like, it's, it's a secret sauce, gentlemen. If, you're, if you don't like your face, just throw on some AVs, and you look a lot better. I'm just sitting here, and, and wonderful analysis by me uh, through you. <laughs> But I mean, it's incredible because if you're wrong, I think you might blame me. Oh yeah, see, I can't lose here. <laughs> yes, this is wonderful. I, was, I just real quick, that that's, what was the trade? The the trade was I got Allen oh, Robinson. You dirty. <laughs> what was the trade? It was it was, it was Allen Robinson. Oh, Los Angeles Rams bum. Uh, for <laughs> yeah, I, I t- look. I told y'all. I told y'all. I came for a fight today. I got the gloves on. Um, no, it was it was Allen Robinson for Juju Smith Schuster in a second round pick. Okay, okay. So just a player who was great and then regressed for you know whatever reason. That's right. But one is twenty five. Yeah, years been, old. No, whatever, whatever. Who cares about that? All right, Mike. What do you got for us? Also, for the record, I actually think Allen Robinson is going to be fine now. But I just really wanted to fight okay. the crowd. We are both checking Twitter and making sure that the Robinson and Juju pre hype news is equal, so we feel good about the trade. All right, I want to talk. I'm going to start with the movie. And because, look, we want the consumer. We, we want innovation. We want something new. But Hollywood, they want things like they feel like, well, it's a sure thing. And so we make, we make sequels. We make reboots. Yeah. Right? And you're like, oh, pff, another reboot? But sometimes a reboot comes along and it is amazing. It's so amazing, in fact, you don't even remember it was a reboot. There was a movie that came out in the 60s only to be remade 40 years later. And that's why, put it on the screen, Brooksy, the Denver Broncos are Ocean's Eleven. It's a fantastic movie. Did you even realize that was a reboot? Because I had no idea. The Rat Pack, right? Yes. Yeah. It's so does, that, does that make Russell Wilson the uh, George Clooney? It, yeah, an unlimited. Unlimited. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if he's a Clooney or a Pitt. Probably neither. But yeah, you know, neither, it, yeah, absolutely neither. But here's the point: he's forever, more of a Jason Patrick for <laughs> forever. And I'm talking like we just we have been unable to care about the entire cast of the Broncos. It's been since the Peyton Manning years. But now, literally. Every single position of the Broncos are interesting. Do you realize this? Like, we like Russell Wilson as a value. There are three wide receivers on this team that you are drafting. There are two running backs on this team that you are drafting. There's at least one tight end that you're dra- that people are drafting. Maybe even a second. If Greg Greg D can get it together, he's getting some hype. And it's like, this is crazy. What a cast of characters for an ultimate picture. Pulling off an ultimate high stealing fantasy point. It's a pretty, it's a pretty low V, though. If if you're pretty honest. low V, it's a pretty low V on Russ there. Oh yeah, well he questionable. Likes a, he likes a deep cut. Yeah. He's got to show off yeah. those pec, pectoralis majoris. <laughs> I see this star's Fireball Jones as well. Well, yeah, because he's still there. <laughs> because if we put Tim Patrick on the movie, no one's gonna want to see it. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, Brooksy. Let's hit the news. News and notes from around the league. They're excited. People are about, ready for the news. They like the news. Oh, oh, get into the news, please. DK Metcalf. Oh, brother. Three year, $72 million extension. Get paid. Got paid. Going back to the same team. Yeah. Thoughts? I mean, we're overall we're very excited for DK Metcalf. We were talking about it on the recent episode of like, right now it's Geno Smith taking the snaps with the ones, which is that is unless somehow like Jimmy Garoppolo gets cut and the Seahawks pick him up. Right now with their staff, this is the best case scenario for DK. He was fine with Geno Smith. He's he's locked up. He's he still retains basically all of his value for Dynasty because you don't have to worry about. 
well, if the Seahawks don't pick him up, does he go to a team and you're just like, this is a complete disaster? Because that's in the range of outcomes. We always think if someone's going to change teams, it's always going to be better. Because he's that's, just going to he's going to stay in the bad yes. position. He's like, uh, we know he's already on a bad team. But I'm saying it can get better because they're not just going to keep moving forward. Jason, do you do you Gino bury him in Dynasty at this point because of that trade? Uh, no, I, th- th- I mean, we talked about this prior to the last episode. I know we pre-recorded because we were coming here. And, right. But we said on that we expect Debo Samuel and DK Metcalf to get paid. This isn't. This is new information. Congratulations. This is best case scenario for DK Metcalf getting paid. Sure. I mean, it's, you know, congratulations. Well, the stat line might not look great after this. Right. Year. So I getting mean, paid now is important. He is he is someone that when he drops in best ball drafts right now, I'm grabbing on the hope that Jimmy G might come and on his talent. But at, in general, I, I don't think he has a monstrous season on, with a bad quarterback. Not, We've seen it too many times. It's not always a great fantasy storyline to say, I hope Jimmy G arrives at some <laughs> point. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you had a couple of uh, camp injuries in Pittsburgh. Pat Fryermuth mm. with a hammy. Oh. The oh, Muth, the Muth ah! is tight. <laughs> and Chase Claypool, shoulder yeah. injury. Yeah. I've seen a lot of highlight films of George Pickens catching balls from Mitch Trubisky. We'll, yeah, we'll see. Did, good you, player. did you perk up at all with some of those? I mean, it, look, if Claypool actually, if something is really wrong with him, but he's been listed as essentially like he'll, he'll be fine moving forward into the season. George Pickens is a good player. However, Steelers rookie wide receivers, other than Trace Claypool, of course, uh, d- they tend not to produce. Although this is it, this is a brand new situation. Well, and Deontay's not going to be there after this year, right. so I feel like they need to establish some more weapons for the future. Long term, Pickens is a great player to have. Yeah, you Pickens him up. Oh, oh my god! Oh man! It's okay. You can boo. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. You're so lucky. You have the soundboard. <laughs> it's pretty weak. Uh, speaking of weak reporting, uh, Peter King. <laughs> <laughs> believes that Ramondre Stevenson will get the bulk of all the carries in New England. Look, that would be great. There was a lot of reports coming out of New England, some hype about Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, and then it, and then it started coming from Peter King, and I'm like, well, uh, back in back in on Damian Harris, we go. Yeah, I mean, there was the report that uh, he that that Ramondre was running with the ones, so maybe he's Peter leaner. King, he's so- two twenty five. I think that's good for him. I mean, you know, we call him Ramondre for a reason. So uh, Ramondre Stevenson, I think, is a is a good pick. At least you know that he can get involved in the passing game if yeah. James White is is missing. And right now, if you're drafting, I think is an immense value. We'll know more when we get closer to draft seasons. Um, you know, does it make it, you nervous about Damian Harris though? Because well, so, we, we've been in those mock drafts where he's in those middle rounds and he just lasts, and then all of a sudden you feel good about getting him. Yeah, I've never felt good about getting him. I, okay. I have a zero percent share right now of Damian Harris, so mm. I, I, you know, it's one of those players that doesn't catch the ball, and so I, and he's not named Derrick Henry, so I don't want him. It is possible that all this Stevenson hype pushes Damian Harris, uh, Damian Harris, even further down. Wait, and, you'd be, in and on then it? I'll be. I still, I still think Harris is the dude until proven otherwise. I don't have any other news where Peter King's saying somebody is the star <laughs> of camp. So I think we can hit the ice oh, baby. and fire. Are you ready? Ice and fire. It's so hot. <laughs> uh, and cold. <laughs> and that, uh, the inspiration for that ditty, Look, so almost it's, relevant it's, again. Sometimes, oh yeah, I was going to say, sometimes you just wake up and you're like, yeah, <laughs> I got something. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to write that down. We're going to write that down. Um, well, this is one of my favorite shows of the year. Uh, we, we do our ice and fire picks. We're going to do it a little bit different today. Keep you in suspense for a little longer. But Mike... First, reveal your player. Yes. Spe- I mean, I'm sure you'll be in massive suspense here. Yes. Speaking uh, of suspense, I want to talk about a quarterback from the San Francisco 49ers. The quarterback. <laughs> Will I'm, he be ice? I want to. T- <laughs> Will he be fire? What do you think? You think Trey Lance is going to be fire or ice? 
they think he's gonna be scream. <laughs> all, yeah, all I hear is ah. All right, I will reveal it to you. Guess what? Trey Lance is a fire player this year. <laughs> wow, those are the same special effects artists from uh, Cruise Control. <laughs> Speed two. Here's the thing. Fire, I, you say? I I have so many arguments that I've laid out for Trey Lance before supporting cast. Just we can go from there. So I wanted to find a new angle. Oh no, not a new argument for Trey Lance. <laughs> because they're unlimited. Me and Russell Wilson have unlimited arguments. Please Unlimited. Thank you for Trey Lance. And so here's the thing. Maybe out there you're like, I I don't believe. I don't believe in Trey Lance. I don't think he's gonna be yeah, that like great. you watched last year yeah. and stuff. And yeah, you're like, eh, maybe he's, he's going to yeah. be okay. But here's the thing. Projections. Let's give Trey Lance a conservative 20 passing touchdowns. That's not that, a lot. That's not a, that should be easily obtainable for Trey Lance with the San Francisco 49ers. If he continues to run the ball eight times a game, which is also conservative, considering in two starts he ran the ball 24 times for 120 yards over those two games. So just... Just give me eight rushes a game. It's not out of the question that we're talking about 750 rushing yards for Trey Lance. Remember, 120 yards and two starts. So over the season, you just give me 750 yards. Mm. Those rushing yards, if he hits that mark, that's an, depending on your scoring format, that's an extra 19 passing touchdowns. That's how ridiculous rushing scoring is for quarterbacks. And that doesn't even factor in the upside, the chance at him scoring rushing touchdowns, which he is going to do. Kyle Shanahan is going to play to the strengths of Trey Lance. He always does for his quarterbacks. Look at the next-gen stats. The Shanahan quarterbacks are always at the top of the league for expected completion percentage because he is smart. He draws up plays that gets the ball easily into the hands of his playmakers. On top of like Debo, Debo exactly like Debo Samuel and George Kittle, and on top of that, he has a cannon of an arm. We've already disproven the the nonsense of the arm fatigue. Trey Lance, just based off of his legs, give me eight rushing attempts a game, and those guys who have done that eight rushing attempts a game on average are finishing in the top six of fantasy scoring. So yes, to me, Trey Lance remains a fire pick. He remains an ADP value. I don't know how long that will hold up because everyone will start to get on board of a little more comfortable with Trey Lance, but but for at least right now, he's a sensational pick at quarterback. Thank you. Well, The concern with Lance has always really been around confidence, confidence of the team and what they were going to do, and now they've officially they moved on. They have no choice. They've moved on. They've said that they would have traded Jimmy if he wasn't hurt, and now they will, so... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see let, if you know you defrost him and then he's on fire and you'll end up in good shape. Let's go from one of Mike's dudes yeah. to another, a sensational athlete. Oh, this is a great start. At running back, Antonio Gibson. Oh, Antonio Gibson season. It's been running hot for two yeah. years. Oh, it's been on fire. Or. Oh, the crowd is letting or you know. Should I say. Oh, no. And Snowmeo <laughs> Gibson, because he's ice! Incredible pun! Incre- how, did, how did I come up with and Snowmeo? But! Oh my goodness! But, the but Volvo! Jason, <laughs> but Jason, uh, did you know that Antonio Gibson has been a, a, a running back one both of his years? I knew wow, that. Wow, voice yeah, of public opinion. Yeah, this is my opinion. job, Volpo. I know that stuff. I know that Antonio Gibson is talented. I know that he has finished as a running back one both years. I know that the three of us collectively have been all in on Antonio Gibson through the first two years. Of Some his... of us more than others. I mean, yeah, you know, look, no, I, no big deal. I, I, was, I was a huge fan. You were a huge fan. And the time is gone quickly for Antonio Gibson. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of changes here for Antonio Gibson. You know, you got the quarterback change. Uh, any any wins truthers here? I did actually hear that we have someone in a. In did a, you just ask if there are any wins truthers? There's someone in a wins jersey here. No, not even a joke. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, that's embarrassing. I don't mean to publicly I mean, look, shame you, but I am. I want to believe that you. that person 
would say, I'm in an Eagles jersey. He is. He is in an Eagles It's also an extremely courageous person. Yeah. Is it so, co- it, it is Eagles, you. right? Not Colts? Like, nobody bought the Colts version, right? <laughs> so you have... <laughs> it's a yeah. Manders jersey. They're yeah. all in the store still. You, so you, you, you have a quarterback change. You have an offensive line change. You know, a couple of years ago, when he was breaking out, he was the sixth best offensive line, according to PFF. Last year, it was 15th, middle of the pack. Then they lost all-pro guard Brandon Scherf. So this... This team is uh, not a great one that you really are like, man, I want that, you know, that offense. That being said, the biggest concerns here for Antonio Gibson are the other running backs on the roster. You've got J.D. McKissick, who was about to leave town. Just give me a kiss. I'm so afraid. <laughs> I don't think that's coming because I don't even think we have that here. Yes. We're good. Yeah, it, it is a little bit terrifying. I don't, I don't you think You think I'm setting a joke up. No, I'm just afraid. Yes. Yeah. So here's the, here's the thing is that you know when JD McKissick uh, was injured at the end of last year Antonio Gibson was during that those last 5 games Antonio Gibson was on a 79 target pace but that was only without McKissick through the other games he was on like a 49 target pace which is not getting it done he's not a receiving back when we loved him it was always the wide receiver converted to running back he could be Christian McCaffrey they said we know for sure that this team is not using Antonio Gibson as the passing downs back. Will he get 40 targets? Sure. He got 40 targets last year and was Who does it? It was good. Yeah, right? But, but he's not going to go to a level of elite pass catching. And that takes his ceiling down uh, significantly. But the other side and to me even bigger because it says what the team is doing, what they believe in Antonio Gibson, who has fumbled away a couple of victories for them, they go out and they sign a third-round running back or draft a third-round running back, which is high draft capital in today's NFL from Alabama, RBU, and they're bringing him in to give him the ball. In fact, it, over the, the last decade, the third-round running backs have averaged 127 rushing attempts in their rookie year. I have Robinson down for 125 rushing attempts. Now, you might say, well, that, you know, that, look, that's, that's not, he's not coming in and taking the job. No, no, he's not. But did you know? I did not know this until, like. I thought it was your job. <sighs> Dadgummit, it, that's a really good counter. Oh, I, oh I'm so upset right now. Uh, Brooks, can I get the boom shakalaka drop? I just got dunked on. If we can find it. Yeah, he can find it. He already used it once. And. Boom. <laughs> Shot. I feel like you're deflating my boom shakalaka yeah. right now. This is all I got for you. Kill! All right. I like that one. Anto- but this is what I was going to say. An- Antonio Gibson last year had the fourth most rushing attempts in the league. He, was, he had 258 rushing attempts. That was more than Dalvin Cook, more than Zeke. They drafted a third-round running back, and they re-signed J.D. McKissick away from Buffalo, who wanted to have him. So he's not the passing downs guy. He's not the 258 rushing attempt guy. Who is he? He's he's just he's a dude. He's Ansonio. <laughs> he's Ansonio Gibson this year. So look, is yeah. he going to be okay? Yeah, he's going to be okay. He's not a, he's not a bum. He's he's a great athlete, but he's not going to win fantasy leagues for people. And he's being drafted as a as a middle of the pack RB two. And I I'm not I'm not going in on, on uh, Antonio Gibson. This it year. also it also throws red flags up as like where in the world would you draft him in a dynasty startup? Oh yeah! Oh, if man. you if you see that project, because he's I've seen people drafting and he just he lasts and he lasts and he lasts because nobody can paint the picture for what the future looks like, and it's you know it's not a good future. And what if he fumbles a couple of times like he has always done? That 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 gets really really scary. All right, next player. Ironically, we're gonna put Hollywood Brown up on the board here. Okay. Mm. Now. Ooh. They're saying, ooh, ooh. <laughs> they're excited. I mean, this is a player that Jason has actually touted many, many times. Because he's great. And, uh, well, maybe this drop will tell you what I think. I Put it up there, Brooks. We got a fire for Hollywood Brown. Listen. Uh, Homer, Homer. Okay. All right. Explain it away. I will. I will blow your mind because I blew my own mind when I was looking up these numbers. Listen how good Hollywood Brown... Mind you, Hollywood asked out 
of Baltimore. He said, this is not, this is not conducive for me, right? Right. I want to do more. Here is what before the Lamar injury. So one through nine weeks, one through nine, that's a decent sample size last year. He's a wide receiver five in fantasy football, the wide receiver five with Lamar going to a new system without Hopkins this year. He had five wide receiver one weeks in that span. That's as many as Jamar Chase had the entire season. He did it in nine Mm. games last year. Goes to Arizona where they pass the ball a lot more. Players with more top 12 weeks than Hollywood on the year. You want me to read you the list? It's a long list. Hold on. Cooper Cup. Impressive. I'm done with the list. (laughs) Whoa. It wasn't even a list. It was a name. Hollywood Brown was elite at the beginning and, and when it mattered. Weeks one through nine when people were competing for the playoffs, you just forget because the injury to Lamar, the way it ended, he had those drops. It was an ugly end of the season. This is a player that goes back with Kyler Murray. You can make fun of Kyler Murray. You can make fun of Arizona. We do it all the time. It's fun. It's our only way to live in Arizona is to make fun of it, to laugh instead of crying. <laughs> But that connection from Oklahoma, that's a real thing. We saw that collegiate connection last year with Burrow and Jamar Chase. This is a player Kyler wanted to bring into the fold. Who's the best deep ball thrower in all of football? Statistically, it's Kyler Murray. As much as you may hate him, he tied Tom. <laughs> uh, someone says two. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank he had, you. He had great numbers on those five throws, man. They were very accurate. He completed a pass so, in training camp, guys. It's crazy because Hollywood is going late fifth, early sixth round in redraft leagues. He's being ignored. You've got players like Amari Cooper going ahead of him, Jerry Judy going ahead of him, a hurt Chris Godwin. You're insane if you do that. Hollywood is going to put up huge numbers in Arizona this year. And he's a similar enough height to Kyler that I think it can happen. Oh, yeah. Good friends. Good friends. See, that's a good case. Yeah, they they actually go to the same daycare. Oh, man. For their their children. I was going to go with, they they sit on the bench while everyone goes on the roller coasters. There's an endless amount. But we would, we're a highbrow show. We We would would never, never... Stoop. Never do that. As low as... Yeah, we'll just look right over that. <laughs> oh, no! You know, very easily. Just straight ahead. Take the what looks like a high road to that. All right, that's enough. All right. Mike, you are back up. And unlike Trey Lance, I think this player... Yes. Maybe a little bit more suspense. Yeah, I want to talk about another quarterback. Super Bowl participant. <laughs> We want to talk about... Super Bowl participant. Well, I can't call him a winner because he didn't win. And if I say Super Bowl loser... It sounds bad. It sounds, now, so, hold on. I know I know everyone listening at home, they may not perceive it as well. But I, before you reveal, Mike... Okay. I would like you to cheer if you think it's fire. For Joe Burrow. Okay. Okay. That's a good cheer. And I would like you to now, I guess... Hiss. Boot, no, I want to hear hiss. hiss. You I mean hear hiss. Thank you. Hiss if you think it's uh, ice. Ooh, that's a that's a strong snake in the room. Many snakes. I thought it was about split. I got a snake, man. (laughs) It's an old shout it. That that goes way back. So here's the thing. Joe Burrow, incredible season, takes his team all the way to the Super Bowl, being drafted as the quarterback five on sleeper, the quarterback seven on underdog, and very handsome. Very yeah, I mean like like his his swagger is off the charts. But so is his ADP. It's a little bit too high for me. And I'm going to cast my Elsa spell upon him. Impressive. I'm letting it go in the draft, Joe Burrow. You're letting him go by? Yeah, he, look. And here's, here's the problem. Who? when you, Joe Burrow, what? Oh, Who? Snow Burrow? Snow Burrow, <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. I don't, I don't, I don't know if they're in on all the snow puns. I can only hope there's one more. <laughs> so Joe Burrow, with like, I'm not arguing that he like, he is great, but here is the problem for fantasy football. Last year he was not just good; he was historically good. He led the league in completion percentage. He led the league in yards per attempt. He was third in the league in touchdown percentage at six and a half percent. 
Those numbers that he put up, a 70% completion rate with an 8.9, 8.9 yards per attempt. That has been done in 16 games two times in history. He did it, and Deshaun Watson did it. So Historically like, great quarterback. You're Got like, it. oh, and, and when you hear all those numbers, you're like, Joe Burrow smashed. What an incredible fantasy football season. Who, who was that saying that? I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that was Joe Cool. Randy Savage or something. <laughs> Ooh, Joe Burrow smashed, brother. <laughs> but here is the unfortunate part. Until the playoff boomtacular, Joe Burrow, to that point, had never had a 30-point week. He was, in fact, the quarterback 12 in points per game, which is uh, barely a quarterback one in points per game scoring. The Bengals were 20th in passing attempts. Second-year quarterbacks that hit the 6.5% on their touchdown rate, historically, the next year we've seen that number drop by an average of just under 3%. Don't tell me that. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's all doom and gloom for Joe Burrow. I'm just saying for him to to pay off at where we are drafting him currently, either Zach Taylor has to pump up the volume to a, a – like yeah, pump up the jam and pump up that volume. Pump it up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this is what I'm here tree. for. Thank you. <laughs> or, or Joe Burrow just has to play at historic levels again. Jalen Hurts. Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, Russ Wilson. These are quarterbacks that are all going after Joe Burrow in ADP. And in just in a heads up, I would take all four of those guys over Joe Burrow to be my fantasy quarterback this year. So I just can't get behind the ADP. I'm not saying Joe Burrow is an absolute, he's going to bust and be an awful fantasy quarterback. Not at all. I just don't think he'll return on the ADP. Yes. You don't want to pay. He's icy. All right. And right. dicey. Snow Burrow. Snow Burrow. Yeah. I like it. All right. All right. Well. Well, you can continue lifting material from us. Go on. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about someone oh. that uh, is a, a giant. He's 6'4", 224, Michael Pittman Jr. Or, oh. or. Tread lightly, my friend. Or is it possibly, because it works well. Michael Snowman no. Jr. No, of course not! He's <laughs> fire! I mean, let's let's go down to the I was, city! I was... We built this city! Yeah. I was concerned for your safety making it out of this building. Yeah, no, look. From me. <laughs> so, Michael Pittman already had his breakout, right? Last year, he was drafted as the wide receiver 45. He finishes the wide receiver 50. That's what wins can do for you. <laughs> right. I mean, well, that's... I, I, Mike almost, almost spit out his spit water. <laughs> the thing about Michael Pittman that I think sometimes is overlooked, because, you know, he... he Maybe he's the last target in town, or uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever reason. He's attached think, to Carson. Wentz. I think they don't give enough credit to Michael Pittman for being a great wide receiver. You know, uh, good friend of the show, Matt Harmon, reception perception. Sure. He destroys those charts. Michael Pittman is is he's fantastic. Is just a great wide receiver. He became one of seven second-year wide receivers since 2010 to put up 85, 1,006. The list of those, which is by definition actually a list, uh, is A.J. Green, Alshon Jeffrey, Josh Gordon, Odell Beckham, Juju Smith-Schuster, Justin Jefferson, and Pity City. That's it. Those that's are a good list. Th that's a great list. And last year I talked a lot about the sophomore bump, second-year wide receivers breaking out. That's when it happens for wide receivers. That's when it happened for Michael Pittman. But the third year is not when they break out from nothing, but it is when they hit their true ceiling. So over the last decade, there are players that have been drafted in the first two rounds of the NFL draft because they were drafted... To be great. Yes. Thank you. To Ooh. be great. That was... I expected that more. guy, that guy wants your autograph. That guy won. <laughs> um, yeah, they, look, when they're drafted to be great and they're entering <laughs> their third year, if in their second year they had 120 targets, that list of players the next season on average finished as the wide receiver 10 in fantasy football. Pittman had 129 targets last year. I have him down for 144, and I genuinely think that's conservative. There are not a lot of other players to throw the ball to. Paris Campbell will be out there for at least six quarters. Um, rookie Alec Pierce, he's, he's Ashton Doolin, uh, Mo Alley Cox is gigantic, but he's, he's bigger not than Michael Pittman. 
Um, but but, gets, did you just say he's bigger than Michael Pittman? Mo Ali Cox is. Yes, of course, because he's the largest man in the entire universe. Yeah, but it is difficult to be bigger than Michael Pittman. He's a big dude. Fair. And, and the, the upgrade at quarterback is significant. Matt Ryan has spent his entire career supporting wide receiver ones. Obviously, he's got Julio Jones, and that's great. He's a Hall of Fame talent. But I'm telling you, Michael Pittman is a great wide receiver. He's not a first ballot Hall of Famer like Julio Jones, but he hasn't really had the opportunity yet. Can I jump in for a second? Please do. Because we've had these debates on the show. We've talked about Michael Pittman. I've worried about him not having a higher ceiling than last year. Well, one thing we talked about in the office, I was watching Kyle Pitts highlights, which, you know, it's fun to do. He's yeah. a really good player. But what I came away with was how many tight window, difficult downfield throws that Matt Ryan was delivering to him, which made me think maybe Matt Ryan has a little bit more left and maybe he's is a lot better get. than Carson Wentz at finding his wide receivers. <laughs> You yeah. did it. You won over the crowd by saying Matt Ryan is better than Carson Wentz. Yeah, last year... I knew I could do it. <laughs> last year, 99 of the 129 targets that Pittman got were even deemed catchable, which is 44th at the wide receiver position. The targets are going up. The quality of targets are going up. And where he's being drafted right now is as the... Well, he's going to go up, I mean, uh, after this show. <laughs> but he's being drafted currently as the wide receiver 15. That's where he finished last year, and things are so much better for him this year. And he's going behind guys like Terry McLaurin, who's never finished as high as Pittman already has. And he has Carson Wentz! (laughs) (laughs) At least you're making my McLaurin argument to yourself on that one. All right. So, Michael Pittman, you're in now. You're chasing chasing, two two members of Pity City. Yeah, there's two members. Well, one of us is the mayor. Yeah. One of us is a janitor, but no, okay. but, you know, All that's right. fine. I'm the janitor. Head janitor. Yeah, thank you. Head janitor. <laughs> we built this city. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Brooksy. That was wonderful. One more player for you before our live mailbag. Put him up on the board. His name? Jerry Judy. Ooh. Now, he's up on the board, and, and maybe the sentiment, I'm hearing a lot of kind of negative energy. Yeah. I'm hearing hisses. This. Thank you for that, Mike. I didn't want to hear. I, okay. A Look, couple of maracas. And Indiana then yeah. Jones has left the building. One we got it. One of those it. was definitely a rattler. Now, see, I wish I could believe the hisses. But unfortunately, Jerry Judy is being drafted ahead, in most drafts ahead of every one of those amazing options in Detroit. And that's terrifying. <laughs> He's an ice man. Oh, I hear you, Jerry Snowdy. <laughs> I hear you loud Listen, and clear. <laughs> that was, you had so much time. That's what you came up with? Jerry Snowy? I Jason, apologize to my mother. I'm going to make my case real quick here for Jerry Judy. Because he is being drafted ahead of Cortland Sutton or exactly where Cortland Sutton's being drafted. Jason, you're a man of many birthdays, would you say? Yeah, I've had 40 of them. Yeah, <laughs> so... You know a thing or two about birthday parties. You make a big deal about birthdays. Here's the situation with Jerry Judy and fantasy players right now. This is Russell Wilson's birthday party, right? Mm -hmm. Unlimited. That's how many invitations he's actually sending out to the party. Let's ride. But fantasy players, for whatever reason, think it's like a one-on-one birthday party with Jerry Judy with where he's going in the draft. And we've really never, ever seen it. From Jerry Judy. And it's not even about disrespecting the talent. It's because there are so... Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. There are so many options. He's being drafted. A lot of big stars in that movie. He has to be Neo. He has to be the one in order for him to pay off and his draft costs. And it's terrifying. We have Cortland Sutton as the one, consensus-wise. But think about it. Fireball Jones, super reliable in that offense. You've got uh, Hamler coming back, who is a speedster, who will help Russell Wilson. You have two dynamic tight ends. You got two dynamic running backs. And so you're asking Jerry Judy to do something he's never, ever done before, which is to barely even sniff greatness. I mean, he's been in the league for, this is third year. You're telling a Michael Pittman third year superstar story. Jerry Judy, two times in 26 career games that he finished in the top 20. So yes, I mean, maybe all he was missing 
to show us greatness was Russell Wilson. But 7.7% of the time in his entire career where he was even fantasy relevant is a huge problem. And guess what? Allen Robinson showed you greatness with poor quarterbacks. Deontay Johnson, Amon Ra last year. You saw more glimpses than you did with Jerry Judy. And so there's a lot of excitement with this system. Nathaniel Hackett's coming in. But here's the thing. He ran a ton of two wide receiver sets in Green Bay. 30-something percent of the time. 33% of the time. If it's Patrick, who's large, Cortland Sutton, who's large, and they've got tight ends inside and only two wide receivers, Judy's sitting on the bench, adding to that 7.7% of the time. So I think it's a huge risk. I don't mind. Taking away from it. What's that? Decreasing the seven yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, it's not a, adding. I'm just. Yes, yeah, thank you, Mike. Just trying to, you know, drop some math. You're a wizard. Uh, so just <laughs> if you want to jump in on Sutton, at least you have the argument that you've seen elite play from him before. He's he's produced. You haven't seen it with Judy. The price is too high. Everyone's trying to get the neo in the offense. And it might just spread out and make a bunch of people unhappy. I don't want to overdo drops either because, you know, that's... You don't? Well, at the same time, I just watched a video just like last night. It it just happened to be in the Twitter feed. And I did not remember how many perfectly placed balls Jerry Judy dropped. I mean, just wide open running down and hit him right between... It's like, catch the ball, man. By the way, in the fifth round... If you want to pass on Jerry Judy, you can take Sutton, like I said. You can take Mike Williams. Yes. You can take yep. Mike Williams. Yep. It's as close as I got to a pander here in Los no, Angeles. Oh, you got one more left on that list. You can take Allen Robinson. <laughs> you <Cooper> guys. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is it for Ice and Fire, but I need the Los Angeles fans here yes. to give us the singular greatest mailbag drop. We have ever heard. You don't drop the hisses into this one. Just until I said that. Yeah. Um, you ready? Hit it, Brooks. Mailbag. That was that was crisp. That was oh, on time. Spectacular. Loud. They had been holding out on us. A lot of performers here in Los Angeles. A lot of waiters. <laughs> All right, if we uh, let's jump into the mailbag here. I can't see you, but I know you're out there. We've there got we a, go. a line of people over here. Oh, a brave feller in a Raiders shirt. Okay, that was once. Can we get the, the mailbag mic on? Yeah. Hi. All right. What's your name? How's it going? I'm Jeremiah. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you for everything you do. Yeah. Uh, my question is, will Jalen Hurts' fantasy value significantly decrease with the addition of Jalen, or uh, with A.J. Brown, based on his running production values? Ooh. That is a great question. Um, I'm going to hop in because I, I love Hurts, and you know I'm going to be pro Hurts here. But the reality is there you know it's like okay we we make a lo- a big deal about the fact that mobile quarterbacks rushing quarterbacks are more valuable than non-rushing quarterbacks but it's not like you don't want them to be good at passing look at who's great look at Josh Allen he runs a lot but he passes a ton he pa- look all you want in the end is a ton of everything you want more yards more passing yards more passing touchdowns and look no further than Kyler Murray Kyler Murray, off of an ankle injury last year, ran the ball more when he came back. You want to know why he ran the ball more? Because he didn't have DeAndre Hopkins. So why wasn't his fantasy value better when he was running more? Because he didn't have DeAndre Hopkins. Like, of course it is better to have a great wide receiver. He's still going to run the ball. He's going to throw more touchdowns, more yards. So the nice thing is that that line of thinking does exist. Not to the Foot Clan. Y'all smart. But keep his ADP down for me, okay? It reminds me a little bit of how you would have talked about Josh Allen before he got Stephon Diggs and how active he was in the running game and the yeah. concerns about that. Not that he'll make that leap, but it's not impossible that Hurts does make that leap. I took a deep dive on A.J. Brown because I've been way lower than consensus on A.J. Brown. And like, because I'm like, this is it. I'm going to get him. He's going to be my ice player. And then after that deep dive, I, he got moved way up. <laughs> he got moved up. <laughs> Uh, he didn't some, end up on the show. He did not end up on the show. Jalen Hurts, I got, I got a little more confidence, secure in. So it, Jalen Hurts is going to be fantastic. 
Next question. All right, what's your name? What you got for us? Uh, what's up, ballers? My what's name up? is Greg. Stoked to be here. My question is, as we head into August and draft season, what are your up-to-date feelings about Alvin Super Camario? Mm. Yeah, I mean, he is he is going so low in drafts People are out of fear. Of and the, the suspension is a fear. It is looming. It just seems like Maybe. it's probably not going to be this year. Yeah, so there's right now on Underdog, he usually ends up at the back of the third round. Um, and that's where you've got to make a decision. Do you want to take a shot on him if he might be suspended for six games? You you look at DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins goes way later in draft. He's missing six games. But but Kamara is a great running back. He is a true bell cow on the field for the rushing downs, one of, if not the best receiving back. So I think that the risk reward is fantastic in the third round. And we don't know about the suspension yet. We know that he's got the legal trouble, but the reality from it the, could take way, time. the way that that law will go is that the NFL right now is letting the legal process play out. Their team is going to do their best to push it till after this season. So there is a significant chance. It's not a guarantee, but there's a significant chance that his suspension comes next year. Now, if we knew that he wasn't suspended, where is he getting drafted? In the, free, in the, first, round. the first round. Yeah, the, the sixth, the seventh spot. So th here's the thing. It's for, worth the risk to me where he's at. For Kamara. Because you get something no matter what. Kamara on his, by far, the most inefficient year on the ground. The guy was at 3.7 yards per attempt, where before that, he was at 5, 4.7. Like, he was way well, above Well, this was that. his most attempts ever, right? Yeah, he, yes, his most attempts ever. Misses four games. He's a running back eight last year at the end of the season. So I still feel very confident in Kamara. Uh, my, not a lawyer, but my gut is that the suspension will be pushed and the court case will be pushed until next year. And we'll, then we'll have this argument all over again. Yeah, that'll be but fun. As for right now, I've, I'm, getting the, I'm buying that dip. Mm -hmm. Next question. Thank you. Hey, best friends. Whoa, whoa, what's whoa. up? Whoa. What's your I'm, name? I'm Darcy. Darcy. And trading makes, makes fantasy fun. Uh, but my question is, uh, so with the increasing popularity of best ball, do you find that team stacking is making its way into other formats in an adverse way, or can that also be beneficial? Sure. That's a good question. Jay Jason's the best ball guy, so we'll go to him first. Yeah, so um, stacking is making its way a little bit more into redraft, and there's questions as to whether or not that's valuable, whether it's, you know, oh, there's more boom, there's more bust, yada, yada, yada. Um, Matt DeSorbo, one of our great writers, he did an entire deep dive crazy data study on this a couple of years ago as to whether or not you should use it in redraft leagues. And the answer is yes. You want boom bust games. I know that that sounds bad. You're like, here's the deal when we play in our normal redraft leagues. You want to take the W. You want to go out and outscore your opponent. If you build a really consistent roster that's going to score 105 points every week when you need 115 to win, you're going to get some wins. You're going to get some wins when your opponent stinks. You want to build a roster that can go out and take the wins, that's going to amplify that stack and score 135 or 200 points and and just win. It showed basically in that study that whether you stack your quarterback with the receiving option or whether you don't, on average, you score the same exact amount of points. But when it turned into how many times do you win, it was different. You had more wins than losses with the stack. So I, I do think that stacking and redraft is good. And for, I mean, I unabashedly love it. Yes. I mean, I just love from a fantasy player perspective. It's wonderful when you're watching Justin Herbert and you have Mike Williams and you get that connection because we've had matches in the past where you grab victory from the jaws of defeat with one Mahomes mm -hmm. to Tyreek play or one of those stack plays and they're just it, it makes it fun. Ask yourself this. Sometimes we learn the best thing by like what we fear. Do you want to go up against someone who has a stack? Like when you're right. like in your matchup yeah, yeah. and you're like, oh man, he's got the quarterback wide receiver stack you're terrified of it for good reason like do what terrifies others <laughs> next question let's get advice for serial killers right yeah 
Yo, 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 ballers. Appreciate all yo, of yo, you. Yo, 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 um, I have a question around uh, just the dynasty value of Kyle Pitts. I have him in a league. I, I see him as untouchable, but I'm getting amazing offers. Like, I got offered a, a first Najee and Hawkinson for Pitts straight oh, up. Oh, man. And, like, am I, am, I, am I crazy with how much I value Pitts in a dynasty league? Well, uh, oh, man. I'll jump in for a second. Go. Like, that's a good offer. <laughs> but but you're not the the reason you're holding on to Kyle Pitts is because you see the potential for him to break the game at tight end. You're you're seeing an advantage of multiple points season after season and unlocking that special power. You know, if you get Hawkinson and he is a perennial kind of top 5 guy, okay, you got value, you can throw him in your tight end position, but you're kind of looking to beat everybody else at tight end, which is why I think He's valued that high, and I don't think it's wrong to value him that high. Yeah. Tra- Travis Kelsey hit five years in a row where he was the number one tight end, and not just the number one guy, but in his own Travis Kelsey tier. So, I mean, like, it's sure, you don't know for sure that that's going to happen, but of all the tight ends in the league right now, the most likely replacement for that type of dominance for a guy who could be the number one tight end for five or six straight years, it's Kyle Pitts. So I'm, yeah. like, th- that offer is overwhelming, which kudos to that other manager because that's that's how you have to get someone like Kyle Pitts is you just you overwhelm them with greatness. But I don't I don't mind you being cautious and still holding. Take the deal <laughs> and run. Take it and run. Here's Here's my counter argument. My count I completely agree with what Mike just said. Like he has the 100% best chance to be the next Travis Kelsey. And you want to know what you would have had to pay to get Kelsey when he was prime like about to do that? You'd have to pay Najee and a first rounder and TJ Hawkinson. But he already did it at that point. Like here's a Would you have traded like, Kelsey for those three players? In that in that time in that situation? I I would have, but my point is it isn't I know this is like this is gonna, you know, get me fired. Uh, well, you can't fire. We we own, <laughs> we own the show. I will not fire myself for this take. I, not again. I, there's two of us and one of you. I don't know if you know how that math works. But it is not actually a guarantee that Pitts is great. I do True. think it's going to happen. But Marcus Mariota comes in this year. It, there's going to be 1,500 fewer r- receiving yards. Is and it, Drake is it Saturday? Is Saturday's your hate Pitts day. I forgot. Sunday's your love Pitts I day. I love. Pits, but my point is the next year following that, well, following that, they're going to have probably have a rookie quarterback. So there's there could be several years from now before the breakout happens. If you trade him today, you're trading that the breakout already has happened. So let's say he does break out. You're fine. You got value for the breakout. So it's not an anti pit take. It's a you're capitalizing on the potential before it's even realized. What is, what Always he, do that. What does he do with the Pitts jersey he bought, though? Oh, you... You send it with the deal. Oh, it goes oh, with the man. deal. All right. All right. He can't hold on to it at that point. Next question. We got Keenan Allen rolling oh, up. Is that right? Oh, there we go. What's what up, you got brother? for us? What's your name, boss? I'm Kyle. Happy to be here, y'all. A Kyle with a Keenan Allen jersey? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. We got one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my question. Which of these three late round tight ends are you most interested in taking a shot on? We got Irv Smith, Tyler Higby, or Gerald Mount Everett. Good callback. So the question of questions to you, Gerald Mike. Everett, Tyler Higby, Irv Smith. Which late round tight end are you going with? I mean, my my projections have it at Irv Smith. I like I can I can pretty. It's easily- probably not Higby. That's what I was going to say is I can rule out Higby. He's got the, the knee injury. We've had time to Higby, and yes. we didn't like it. No, we, we've seen that a few times, and it's just I don't know that I can keep Higby s- smashing my face yeah. into that brick wall over and over. Uh, the Irv Smith and Gerald Everett, both extremely interesting. Both, I mean, similar situation, right, of you have two known wide receivers who are going to be 20% of the targets each. I mean, I would rather have Justin Herbert throwing me the ball over Kirk Cousins, but there, there's still the excitement for Cousins and the new offense. So 
My projections and all the process it led me to Irv Smith, so I, I'll stay there okay. for now. That's that's where I am as well. You've got you know a reality where I, I know Adam Thielen is great, but he's going into his age thirty two season. It, it, there is a non zero chance that you know, like Jordy Nelson went from the wide receiver three to the wide receiver one, the the wide receiver one to the next year when he turned thirty two. And he played all but one game. He went to the wide receiver 46 and didn't get 500 receiving yards. So I'm not saying that's going to happen with Thielen, but it could. And if it does, Irv Smith could be the number two in target. So that would be my pick. You go ahead. Oh. Next final question, it looks like. <laughs> Howdy, ballers. Howdy. Howdy. What's your name? My name is Gabe from Los Angeles. So my question, so my question is this. Given that this is the Fire and Ice episode... What player or player take are you most nervous about being wrong about this oh. season? <laughs> All right. I, I know mine for sure. So All right, get in there. It's, it's, it, look, I've got, I've got some deep scars from Carry On Johnson. <laughs> um, and I love, I love Brees Hall. And I think he's a Carry amazing. On my <laughs> oh, wow. And That's, I am. I am so terrified of being wrong because I'm not going to stop my love for care, for, for care. Uh, <laughs> We know that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to stop touting Brees Hall. He is great, and that's not to say I haven't been wrong before or I couldn't be wrong here. I'm terrified to be wrong, but Brees Hall's great. You have one, Andy? Well, I, I certainly don't want Trey Lance to be that good. <laughs> Is that for fantasy or for Cardinals? That's for you. I don't okay. want you to dunk on me. I, if he's just regular good, I think I get by okay. Yeah, that's that's fair. It, for me, it's these second-year wide receivers where I'm like, I just don't see it happening. But, but like Elijah Moore and Rashad Bateman, uh, I've, they are terrified because they are both excellent. They're both excellent. But Rashad Bateman in the passing volume of the Ravens, I, I know you made the case for Hollywood Brown for this year, but like that's when he really got it done. Other than that, really nothingness. And then I'm not I'm I'm never betting on Zach Wilson. That's just that's something that will not happen. You know, a the, lot of dog in him. The uh the old uh the quote that came out against Lamar where he's like, I don't care if he's a, a QB one MVP for twelve years in a row. That's how I feel about Zach Wilson. <laughs> he could do that and I'll say, Yeah, that guy sucks. Yeah, yeah. All right, that is going to do it. For today's show. Thank you so much, Los Angeles. Thank you, Los Angeles. You are beautiful people. Incredible. Stay safe and goodbye. Listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.